So, yes, I have written a prologue to this story as a setup for your character and a built-in hook of sorts, okay? So, and, and again, the way I see it is this is the origin story of uh, your character, Miranda. <clears throat> um, and then, you know, you'll bring Miranda into the other Dread House, etc. stories. So, um, and again, I don't know this. Well, I can't tell you what it's called yet. So here's where we're going to open. We are going to open in an antique shop in a town in Montana. Do you happen to know a name of a town? Helena. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, there is a Helena, Montana. Oh, okay. So you I want think it to it's be the capital. Name. Well, I don't care where you put it as long as it would be nice to know if it's a small no, town it's a or big, it's a big it's a city. Big city. Okay, so I might actually be well, able I don't to know. use... Maybe Helena's not a big city. Yeah, that's why I was wondering if you really <laughs> wanted to use an actual city name. Maybe you'd rather call it like Terra, Montana or something. Make up a city. I mean, it's not going to matter to the story anytime soon anyway. So, um... We'll just say a big city in Montana. Okay. And we open on this antique shop um, of which you are the proprietor, <clears throat> proprietress. Um, and I thought you could tell me a bit about the antique shop. If it's a small little place, does it sound at all like this? Does it have a ticking clock? Yes. Is it raining outside, apparently? <laughs> That's what I hear. Wood floors, I'm guessing, by the way. Tabletopaudio.com providing some soundtrack. Could it be Miranda's memorabilia? Oh, yeah, Miranda's memorabilia. Okay. So this is a, a venture that you started up. It's not like you inherited it from your dad or anything like that. Okay. Well, there's probably an interesting story there that we could get into one day, but for now, okay, Miranda's memorabilia. There's one particular lamp that I like. Uh-huh. But it looks better in the store. Are you hoping you never sell it? Yes. Okay. What's so special about this one? It's pretty. It's pink. Okay, now in our discussion that we've been doing, you've been talking. It's clear glass. Oh, that does sound pretty. It has kind of got little bubbles in the glass. Is it like a gas lamp? Like we were seeing on Murdoch earlier? Yeah, maybe. In our discussions previous, um, we talked about <laughs> psychic abilities. Um, medium, what, what, mediumship, <laughs> and psychometry. Um, how does psychometry tie in with this? I'm sure it had something to do with the establishing of this antique shop, but we don't got to get into all of that. But how would you say that, or uh, yeah, how would you say that psychometry uh, is it part of the attachment to the lamp with the clear pink shade? for instance. Do you see the blinking red light? Oh, now I can see it, okay. No, only when people come in, the only I use it to pair them with the item that they're there for. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so kind of like Lena. Yeah. Warehouse 13. Okay. Well, <clears throat> let's move it right along that one day 
a guy comes in and he's obviously a drifter um, and he wants to sell you what he says is his last possession in the world. He's, he's out of money. And he's got this carved wood pipe. It's entirely unremarkable. Um, it's kind of long. Um, it's got a thin bowl on it that's caked up badly. It needs to be cleaned a long time ago. Um, and the outside of it is kind of caked up with road grime and that sort of thing. And, and um, he says that it is something that he, um, let's see, he stole it 10 years ago when he was a kid from the house that all the neighborhood kids said was haunted. Um, and when he hands you this pipe... No, I already have it. Okay, I'll take a chance here. <laughs> he hands over the wood pipe to me and I take it and I look at it and then I look at him and I give it back and I said no this is meant to be yours I can't take this this is this is meant to be yours no matter that's why you stole it because <clears throat> it had to be yours but I will give you some money because it's worth some money and I'll give you the money for it, but you, you have to keep that. All right. I don't think I need to veto <laughs> that. In order to say that when you touch it, you have a strong impression. Images flash through your mind. You see uh, soldiers... Uh, not soldiers, sailors sitting around a table and they're looking at you through the eyes that you're seeing through and they have great fear on their faces and they start they start exploding like their chests explode and two of them their heads explode and in the flash, you see that it's inside an old house with this, like, moldy, yellowing wallpaper just peeling off the walls. Um, and you get that <clears throat> strong impression and these vivid flashes. And if you want, we can say it's unlike anything you've experienced before with this psychic power of yours um, so you want to stick with what you said okay um, then I want to ask okay. do you know yes. where this came from um, sure and then he can say that he uh, well ma'am I I stole it from or I stole it I stole it from a uh, from my house that when we were kids said was haunted. I don't believe in any of that stuff. Where is this house? It is in the little coastal town of Pepper Marsh in the state of Bleep. I, I don't know what state this is in. It's it's next to the book says an ocean. Um, so it's at least next to a body of water. You know, I didn't do any kind of like set up intro thing to say like we're we're gonna play um, the the sinister secret of Pepper Marsh, I think is the name of it, and it is part of the Dread House. I should have like set the book right here or something, you know. Um, <clears throat> so yes, that's where it is. And I I would prefer to quibble that he wouldn't take the hand out, but. At the at the end of this scene, I will say that fine, he takes the hand out and leaves.
I've never heard of that town. Where is it? I mean, how far is it from here? I have no idea. Make up a number. Um, you would, you would have to take a train. That's your answer. You're gonna have to take a train. Yeah, it's wherever it is, you know that you would have to take a train. And we also didn't give okay. the the time period. We're we're doing a vague. Um, uh, time period of the Murdoch mysteries. So, um, like 1900 with an asterisk that we can use whatever bending of the rules of science that they use when it comes to technology and such. Is the house still, how long ago was this? He stole it 10 years ago. Is the house still standing? Yes. Well, so far as he knows, he left that town like... Let's see. I was thinking he was like 10 years old. Now he's like 20 years old. So he would have left home like four or five years ago. So that's when it was... He knows it was last standing. Do you know the owners of this house? Uh, the owner died 20 years ago. Crazy old man Crowley. Why did you say it was haunted? That's just what everybody said. Um, uh, it was just kind of the, the legends of the town. You know, people claim to have seen things and stuff like that. Did you want to get any more specific? I never experienced thing and anything and I don't remember any of the stories. It was just stuff kids say. And the parents tell their kids to keep them from going and playing in a dangerous abandoned building. Why don't we move along from the guy and um, we will cut to the part where you're going to have to take a train right out there. Um, what? Now, we had already kind of discussed that you'd uh, surely be staying a few days. Mm -hmm. um, and your intentions are to enter the house. I wonder if the microphone is picking up M.C. Wesley in there. <clears throat> All right, there is a uh, Strangers on a Train, so I assume this is going to be train ride stuff. Um, I was thinking, as far as your dad goes, um, because you said you had one, um, I thought maybe we could say you brought your um, pistol that you inherited from your pioneering dad or something like that. So you've got like a, I don't know, they, I don't know anything about guns, but I know in the Westerns, they were always like big, like 45, like Colt 45s or whatever. So I'm guessing it's sort of a sizable gun if you got it from your dad. Would you prefer to say, uh, you know, as an antiques dealer, you come across vendors of various things. Perhaps you well, buy yourself a gun. Antique stores are usually in shady areas of town. All right, fair enough. So do we want to say you've purchased yourself a ladies-sized gun? And after watching a two-part Murdoch, um, have you opinions about what you would be wearing? Probably a skirt and a somewhat billowy blouse. Okay, do you have a hat? No, I have a scarf. And what did you say you have? Oh, right. And what did you say about your hair? Why don't it's you read off your any description you have in your character sheet for the video's sake? Uh, she's medium height, trim, long brown curly hair, but not too curly. Um, and it's tied back with 
in a scarf. And she has blue eyes. And her... She's kind and empathetic and a sucker for hard luck cases. Uh, everyone and every... My uh, beliefs, I guess. My beliefs, everyone and every culture has a story even when they are dead. Yeah, okay. All right, so... It, it, you think she's wearing gloves as she travels, or is she not the okay? All right. So, and we Probably have... Probably a heavier skirt. Okay, and that's right. We're saying... Not a, you know. We're saying it's today. So, it's January 30th. Um, and we will say that it's a place that's not terribly cold, wherever this is. And so... Well, I live our, in Montana. Yeah, but I mean for your traveling. You'd be traveling southern one way or the other. So, but see, this Cthulhu stuff is written for Massachusetts, but we're going to say that's not the case. I mean, for that matter, this story is written for like medieval England anyway. So, so we'll say that it's somewhat southerly to where it's not terribly cold, you know. Uh, well, that's true, and it's by an ocean. So... Um, let's see. You've got your stuff. You've got your pistol. You're on your train. You have a strong compulsion that you are following to go to this house. Okay, so there's our little, like, little chapter one part of the prologue. We're going to have you arrive at the town, and I have no map of the town or anything like that. Um, we can say that it is a, a small town, a coastal town next to the ocean, um, and we will say that you are arriving, you are arriving, the train is arriving, um, like around six-ish. Like around the time that it is right now. Although actually I believe it's more like seven-ish now. But uh, it is just beginning to get dark when you step off the train in this town. Um, but the businesses are quite possibly still open, I would think. So, let's uh, end the train. And yeah, I, I have nothing for the sounds of the town. So, <clears throat> you get off the train in Peppermarsh, and even from here, you see this one cliff that like reaches out like a claw over the the ocean and yeah there's a a big old dilapidated house up on it 